Technically speaking, what is the hardest part of building SaaS? Is it creating an aesthetic front end? No. Is it creating a secure back end? No. Or is it creating a database that accurately models your domain? No, it's none of those things. For me, it's always been the glue that connects everything together. It's how to connect your database to your back end, how to connect your back end to your front end, how to create APIs, how to upload images and where to store them. It's all those different parts that make up your running SaaS application. That's a big challenge for people that want to create their own software products on their own. It's a big challenge for solo developers. And I've worked in some big teams creating very well-known software applications like the BBC News website, Sky, lastminute.com. Like all of these are big software applications that get you know millions of users but we always had a big team to deal with all of these things we had separate teams for front end another team for back end a team for handling the database and a team for devops or operations so you'd have a lot of human resources to to handle all of these things and and basically to to provide the glue to connect all of these things together but when you're working on your own you don't have that like you're just a one-man band and you've got to handle everything yourself. You've got to be a front-end developer, a back-end developer. You've got to be a DevOps engineer. You've got to be a database engineer. You've got to know about security as well. That's not easy. And that's why a lot of developers, when they're confronted with this problem and they, they've got an idea for a software product that they want to get out there, it's a valuable idea. And how can they do that in the quickest time possible without spending a year learning <laughs> how to host a database on AWS. I get the problem. And the solution that a lot of developers have, have gone for are these all-in-one hosting products. You've probably heard of one called Vercel. All-in-one hosting that claims to solve all of these problems for you. And don't get me wrong, it's a good product. You can basically submit your entire application to this Vercel system. It will deploy it. It will create your APIs. It takes away a lot of the heavy lifting because frankly in the beginning in the early days of building web applications and software on the internet the options were very very limited a lot of companies had their own servers to connect a database to a back-end server was literally like going into that server room and and creating a <laughs> adding a network cable between those two boxes we've moved on from that thankfully then we had cloud providers AWS Google Cloud Microsoft Azure there's a lot of complexity there isn't there <laughs> well there are hundreds of services on AWS alone how do you know which database service to use how do you know whether you're going to run your application as a serverless function or as a docker container or even create your own server or virtual machine and run it in there there are so many different options and Products like Vercel take away a lot of that complexity, which is great, but it does come at a cost. And the funny thing is that I don't think a lot of developers realize that Vercel and other hosting companies, other companies that take away a lot of the stress of figuring out how to host your software product, they're using AWS in the background. So there's no way that it can be cheaper for you to host your software on Vercel than it is directly on AWS. Obviously you're paying for the convenience. You're paying for the time saved in development or, or the time saved in having to learn how to use AWS Lambda to create a, a serverless function that isn't gonna, it, it doesn't mean you're gonna have to run your application 24 seven when you're only getting a couple of hundred visitors per month. Well, I've been building my own products for a while now, my own SaaS applications and websites and I'm currently running six different applications and I'm getting over 5,000 page views per month. I'm running all of this myself within AWS and to some extent I'm doing that because I come from the world of working in companies where they want to have the control. Not in a bad way but in the way that there's a DevOps team that they want to be able to tweak every tiny thing and there's a development team who want to be able to use all these different systems like they want to be able to use a, a, a queue, messaging queue, or they want to be able to use a NoSQL database. It's more scalable. They want to be able to use all these different features that cloud providers like AWS provide you. They want the control of being able to stitch them all together. And obviously that comes at the cost of 
needing a big team to handle that. But I found a way to keep that sense of control, not have to sign up to a monthly subscription to use a product like Vercel, and actually end up paying less per month than I would do if I was using that product. And it, it's basically an in-between. It, it's in-between going full DevOps engineer, full operations guy with a big beard and like the server rooms and all that kind of stuff. That's one extreme. And on the other extreme is, is Vercel. Let's see Indie Hacker. Let's build this app in, uh, in one day and just put it on the internet. I'm sitting somewhere in between and I found a solution that, that allows me to have the control of AWS, but without a lot of the complexity. This isn't for everybody, but I think there are a lot of developers out there that, that would enjoy more flexibility, not having to sign up for a monthly subscription and actually end up paying per use. I'm paying about $18 at the moment per month for all my six different web apps that I'm currently running. That excludes buying domains, but that's just everything, databases, everything included. I don't need to create a separate database using a, a service outside of Verso. I have everything running in AWS. The glue that I use to join all this together is a service called SST. And the beauty is, is it's an abstraction. And I think abstractions are so important in software development. Obviously, using JavaScript is an abstraction on assembly language. And then you could say something like React is an abstraction on top of JavaScript. Well, SST is an abstraction on top of AWS. So with SST, I can basically just say encode, build me a Next.js site. And then I do NPX SST deploy, dev or production or whatever. And that basically creates everything I need in the background for me without me having to worry about it. So it's basically my DevOps team, but codified within this tool. I'm not going to go into the technical details of, of how it works. You can find that out for yourself. But I want to make this video because I feel like a lot of people think there's, there's one extreme or the other. There's the oversimplified, you're just going to use Vercel and it's going to take care of everything and not give you much control. Or there's the other extreme of having to spend years becoming a, an AWS solutions architect. There is a middle ground. I think it's ideal for some developers who see themselves as doing this long term, right? If you're going to do this long term, then there's probably going to be things that you need to use from some of these cloud providers. Like I recently have been incorporating AI into one of my apps, and it was super easy to take that out of AWS and integrate it into my Next.js application because it's just an AWS service that I can call and I'm already running in AWS, so it, it's very easy. If you're like me and you think it's a good idea to have a bit more understanding of, of how things work in the background and you're, you're a bit curious about that, then I'll put a link in the description for a tutorial for how to get started with SST. Actually using SST has made me feel more empowered to create things quicker. But my final thought for you is that the main thing, the big thing is actually having a vision for wanting to create something, like having a problem that you want to solve with software. If you have that, like the tech stack doesn't really matter and all of these technical details don't really matter. You're just gonna figure it out anyway. That's the motivation that you need. So if you can figure out what you want to build, then everything, is, everything else is gonna take care of itself. So do that. And I look forward to seeing what cool things you create. See you in the next one.